50 years ago, five football players stepped onto the campus at the University of Georgia, becoming the first African-American players in program history. This group of men will become known as the five. I had the honor and privilege to sit down with five men who had the courage and strength to be part of the opening of doors of equality for young men, just like me, to not only grace the classroom, but also the field. Here's my exclusive sit down with the five. It's the first time you guys have been together in 50 years. I mean, to have all you guys together in this space, what's that, this moment like? Well, I'm just excited and happy to have the family back together again. Uh, that's why when we saw each other, we could just embrace. Uh, just elated that we're still here 50 years from that we showed up at the University of Georgia and still alive and healthy and could tell jokes and laugh at each other and still be what we were when we were 18, 19 years old. It's a, it's a, uh, it's an honor to be frankly honest. Uh, you know, I go back and think about what I accomplished in high school and I think about all of the things that I have accomplished to date and it all goes back to the, some of the fundamental things that I learned playing football. Tell me about that experience. Obviously it was significant with the five of you guys coming to the University of Georgia, but for you personally, coming into that situation, how significant was it for you? And did you know that, hey, I'm breaking down a wall here at the University of Georgia? And I think, uh, DJ, it was a tremendous uh, opportunity uh, for all of us, in particular for this five. I've said it before, I'll say it again, that is, I believe that these five were uh, not just chosen by Vince Dooley, but I believe Vince was carrying out the idea that was placed within him by the Heavenly Father. And all of us were uh, chosen by him to do what we, uh, what we did at that time, to help establish the foundation on which they're now hopefully continuing to build. Talk about the experiences that you had. Were your teammates accepting? How was it on campus? I mean, what were some of the things that you, you guys had to kind of overcome while being on the team? Even with the players that, that we were playing with, uh, it didn't bother us to that degree of how they treated us because we know how we would treat them on the field. <laughs> uh, uh, in, in other words, you know, we, we sort of chastised them on the field uh, if they were out of line and said a few things that, um, you know, we, we knew wasn't right. Uh, but as far as the other students, um, you know, it was – it was a, a, a point where we were centered, uh, Richard said it, we, we, we were centered uh, understanding why we were there. Uh, and we were, that was a goal. And each day, if we had issues, then we would come together and, and, and speak with each other uh, honestly about our issues. Chuck talks about having the opportunity to connect with some other brothers, but from what I hear, you didn't want to go to the University of Georgia at first. Right? I was just like Chuck, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go there. <laughs> My reason for not wanting to go was that I felt Georgia was a running school and I was a receiver and I wanted to go to a school where they would throw the football quite a bit. All right, Rich, let's talk about it. The end of the round. First Florida, let it go, 80 yard touchdown to Gene. Take us through it. Well, to be honest with you, I think I learned how to throw the football from Harris. <laughs> because Harris was actually the passing quarterback in high school from his halfback position. So Coach Dooley comes to me and he said, Richard, I think we're going to run your play if we get the ball back. <laughs> I had an excellent handoff from the quarterback, Matt Robertson. Gene ran a wonderful route, and I was able to throw a pretty good one of Horace throw. <laughs> I threw it like Horace. <laughs> and 80 yards later, he was in the end zone. <laughs> There are a lot of people in the world who obviously are, are in similar spots where they're looking to kind of establish themselves or they're looking to break a barrier of some sort. What kind of advice do you have for people who stand in that, like you guys stood in it by yourselves where a lot of people may not be with you, a lot of people against you? What kind of advice do you give those people who in those moments may be nervous or scared about stepping out on their own? Operate in a spirit of excellence. 
and and fear nothing. You know, one of the things that that uh, will cause you to stumble in life is is fear. But face your fears uh, and face them with confidence that that you're able to overcome. I, I remember even uh, myself uh, in the shadows of of. Uh, Sanford Stadium uh, when I was about three and four years old hearing the roaring sounds of uh, you know football fans and boy I was just so excited to hear those sounds so I'd go out and throw the ball up and and I always said boy I'm catching the ball and when they when they when they you know roar I say boy they, they, they're really roaring for me you know they, they're cheering for me you know Oh, what a wonderful time. It was a surreal moment being able to talk to those guys. As you can see, they are all in good spirits and in good health and living well. Yeah, paved the way for a lot of folks. They yes. look great. Yeah.